Today we're talking about the INFJ burn down. It has to do with keeping something that you have made out there somewhere for an indefinite amount of time. And what the burn down is, if you haven't put it together yet, is an INFJ who creates something, a YouTube channel, whatever it is, maybe even just a comment on a video, and then later goes back and gets rid of it. Just burns it to the ground. INFJs, we need to talk. We need to talk about that video channel you started but took down a few weeks later. We need to talk about those paintings you drew but threw away. We need to talk about those poems you wrote but ripped apart into pieces. We need to talk about how INFJs deal with what they consider to be mistakes or flawed actions of their past. INFJs as introverted intuitive types have a big problem with introverted sensing. We are future oriented types, we focus on what things can become, we have ideas that we seek to realize, but often our execution is far from our dream or ideal. INFJs as future oriented types tend to want to avoid dealing with or talking about their past, often INFJs act as if they had no past. They were never involved in politics. They never had a history with something. They never made any mistakes. They never had any problems. They never did anything wrong. There was never anything bad in their past. There was never anything bad that happened to them in the past. INFJs avoid talking about the past and actively try to sweep their problems and their past under the rug. They avoid and they hide evidence and they delete things on the internet that will reveal their past or who they used to be. Yeah, INFJs have a bad habit and uh, it is the habit of trying to conceal or hide from who you used to be or what you used to do in the past or problems you used to have. INFJs hide from the past because they are so focused on the future. They don't want to feel trapped by who they used to be. They don't want people to hold them back. They don't want people to tell them their old mistakes. They don't want to be reminded of who they used to be. Because they want to focus completely 100% on who they wish they were or who they are trying to become. INFJs are interested in transformation and realizing a vision or an idea, putting together something or making a concept you've had in your mind become a reality, but a lot of time your practical skills are lacking. You're not an ESTP, you're not able to solve any problem effortlessly just by experience and practice. You're not able to simply think of or entertain every way to fix a problem or as it comes up. Often you can stare yourself blind on this one thing and you forget to prepare for all the things around it. You don't take the time to study up all the necessary skills. You don't sit down and develop and try and practice and uh, take a course before you start up a project. You want to rush immediately to the part where you realize a vision. You want to focus directly on making an idea happen. But because you lack the necessary skills, because you never took any courses on making videos or editing or putting together a video or formatting it, because you never had public speech lessons, your voice wasn't as good as you hoped it would be, your uh, video quality wasn't as good as it wa could have been, your lighting was not the way you wished it was, because you didn't take the time to rehearse the message or to go over the data or the facts. Because you didn't uh, study enough of the topic you were talking about. You said things that you shouldn't have. You made mistakes. You said stupid things. And so you came to harbor a regret. Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Oh, why did I say that stupid thing? Why did I make that stupid video? Oh my god, I look terrible in that video. I don't want to come off like this, I sound too aggressive, or I sound too sure of myself, or I sound too insecure. I don't want people to see me like this, I don't want people to have any evidence, any introverted sensing, any data, any evidence of the fact that I was this way, or acted this way, or thought this way, or talked this way in the past. Recently at work I had to learn a new task. I had no training in it, I was given roughly 3 minutes to learn how to do it, it was a very complex task, it required a lot of detail awareness, it required a lot of rote practice and memorization and uh, it required a lot of number checking and data checking 
And it was a very hard job and I had lots of things on my plate and I was not adequately prepared. So I did this task, but I did it incorrectly. Now, I could have, of course, told my manager that I did it incorrectly. I could have let them know that I made a mistake. But instead of doing this, I went directly into hide the evidence mode. How can I fix this ev issue? How can I solve this problem I caused without letting anybody know? So. I came up with a strategy to make sure that no customers were affected in a negative way and that the problem was solved and that everything was fixed all on my own without asking anybody. And hopefully nobody will mention this to me or ask me why I did this. Hopefully nobody will um, note this because honestly I don't like to be spotted. I don't want people to note this or think badly of me or think negatively of me because I did this. I don't want people to go, oh no, Eric can't be trusted with this task. He's not good enough for it. He's too unreliable. He makes mistakes that he shouldn't have. I want people to see me as flawless and perfect. And honestly, what I've noticed is people tend to see me as flawless and perfect. I have so many friends that comment that, Eric, you seem good at everything. Eric, you seem to always be po so positive. Eric, you seem to always do everything well. How can you do it? How are you able to do it? I work a lot on my image <laughs> and appearing uh, flawless. I work a lot on actively trying to appear perfect even though I'm not. It's an illusion. I'm tricking you guys. I'm honestly making just as many mistakes as you are. I just don't want you to see it and I just do better at uh, hiding it. Another thing as an INFJ is when I've run scientific surveys or studies and the data hasn't conformed to what I wished it would have been, when people haven't tested the way I wish it would, they, I they would have, it's been like I wished I could delete the survey, I wished I could remodel the evidence or rewire the data to get another conclusion. It's annoying when objective truth does not conform with my personal expectations and that's why I've always told people I'm not a rational type. I've always had uh, a stronger base feeling of what I wish to convey and it's always been stronger than my desire to conform to the objective numbers and statistics. Of course, I've been deeply aware of this, so I haven't done this. But I've had that like, oh no, the data doesn't agree with me. Why is this? And uh, there must be something wrong with the data. The numbers must be misleading me. There must be something wrong. Uh, I must redo the study in a different way and make get so I will get the data I wanted. Yeah, it's frankly embarrassing and I'm happy, lucky that I've had INTJs in my life that have gone like, Eric, accept it. These are the numbers, accept the facts. And I'm like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to accept the facts. Uh, but yeah, eventually I come around and I always try to learn and I always try to do better. I'll be honest, that was how I found out and discovered the concept of flow types. I kept trying to test and prove the cognitive function hierarchy. I was so sure of the cognitive function hierarchy. I really wanted John Beebe's model to be correct. I really wanted to prove that an INFJ had introverted intuition, extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, and extroverted sensing. But I simply couldn't prove it. The data, the numbers, the test takers kept disagreeing with me, no matter how I wrote the questions. And so I had to admit the, I had to face the facts. INFJs were not extroverted feeling types or introverted thinking types, and I couldn't perform or prove this to a personnel test. It simply didn't work, the numbers didn't add up. INFJs were introverted intuitive and introverted feeling types. That's what the numbers said. And eventually I had to come around to it and accept it. Then I started thinking about what it meant and what it could mean and how I could use this. And then I learned from it and I improved from it. And I was able to build something that was my own out of this. I had to, I was able to create my own model and to grow and develop and uh, change my perspective and get a more nuanced understanding of INFJs and of all the 16 personality types. So it was all for the good. So 
my fears, my refusal to admit the truth, my desire to hide behind the established beliefs and conventions was silly and pointless. Let me tell you something. Normally, INFJs are not introvert thinking types. Normally, INFJs are not inhibited by their perfectionism. I see INFJs are actually quite likely to take on new projects. They're likely to say yes to a new task at work. They're likely to say they can do something even if they can't. They're likely to start up a video channel even though they don't know anything about video making. They're likely to write a poem even though they don't know how to write poems. And they're likely to try and start up a task. The perfectionism of introverted thinking only comes later. It's a regressive tendency in INFJs rather than a flow tendency or a proactive tendency. INFJs use introverted thinking during times of regression or when they are moving backwards. They are doing it uh, when they are experiencing regret or when they are uh, deciding to quit on a task or when they are giving up at something or when they are experiencing doubt or uh, feeling that they are not good enough. And that feeling comes always afterwards. It comes in hindsight. It can happen because we've been criticized. It can happen because somebody told us we were stupid. It can happen because somebody confronted us with a mistake. It can happen because we ourselves noticed a mistake or we spotted something and we simply realized how embarrassing it would be if people noticed. It can happen because we, we experience confidence and we move with confidence towards what we want and love most, introverted intuition gaining self-awareness, realizing a vision, communicating and connecting with other people. And then we afterwards start experiencing insecurity. Like the further we go, the more our confidence begins to waver, the more we start noticing uh, that things weren't the way we wished they were, the more we start thinking, oh, this was not the vision I had in mind, oh, this was not what I hoped to say, this was not what I was expecting of myself, this was not what I wish to convey to people, this is not how I wish to impact others, this is not how I wanted other people to feel or respond to my work. And that's when we become insecure. I've thought about deleting my channel numerous times throughout the last few years and I have deleted my channel a few times before I became a consistent YouTuber. It took time. I created, uh, since 2007, more than 10, more than 10 blogs taking down each and every one of them in order until I had ericdor.com. I worked through different ideas and political belief systems and values. I uh, worked on different systems and ways to think about typology until I found the right one, one. And I kept burning down my work over and over again until I was happy with it. I kept taking down my political blogs over and over again until I felt that I could be consistent in my beliefs and what I said. All INFJs want to be and tend to be confident about the future, the ideas, the visions that they have inside of their mind more often than not. But even an INFJ will experience doubt. Even an INFJ will question themselves or their mind or their mental state or their philosophy or their thought process or their ideas. INFJs experience introverted intuition as a proactive, positive, natural orientation. That's why we will eventually be able to realize some kind of work or some kind of idea in some form in our lives. No matter what, no matter the doubt, no matter the perfectionism, no matter the our past, no matter our former mistakes that we used to do, no matter who we used to be, we'll eventually find a way to make our ideas happen. Today you can find videos of myself from back in 2017 and you can cringe or I cringe, you can laugh and you, I laugh and you can do all kinds of things with this kind of work. What I've come to realize is my belief in my future and what I can do and my potential is higher than the stupid silly person I used to be or the silly thoughts or the bad quirks or bad habits I used to have. I have overcome who I used to be, I've learned and I've grown and I've developed over and over again. I've found ways to respond to problems. So nowadays when people confront me with mistakes, when people give me criticism, 
I am able to have and maintain belief in myself and to say it won't happen again because I know it won't, because I know I'm a person who is capable of change, because I know I'm a person with huge transformative potential, because I know that if I believe enough in my ideas and if I work hard enough to make them happen, they are going to happen and nothing is going to be able to stop me from doing it. With introverted thinking and introverted sensing, it's that it makes an INFJ feel trapped. INFJs can become extremely introverted, extremely judging, extremely controlled, extremely systematic, extremely strategic when they are trying to appear perfect, when they're trying to appear correct, when they're trying to fit themselves within the objective truth, within the system, when they're trying too hard to conform to the numbers, the guidelines, the structures, the strategy of the workplace or of society, when they're trying too hard to fit themselves in the box that the world tends to advance as the way to be. INFJs can become extremely conforming and extremely regressively conforming in that they retreat to this box, they go back to these things, they hide behind these things whenever they're afraid of being vulnerable, whenever they are afraid of making a mistake, whenever they have put themselves out there and started to feel ashamed or embarrassed for doing it. It's like we jump between the two. We jump between our desire to try new things, put ourselves into new environments, and our desire to avoid appearing stupid, avoid making mistakes, avoid being seen by other people, avoid uh, saying something we shouldn't have, avoid being laughed at, avoid being seen as stupid. What changed my life was recognizing introverted feeling in myself and recognizing that I wasn't sharing what was supposed to be objective truth or an objective vision that was going to be something flawed or impersonal or removed from myself. No, I was sharing a vision, an idea that connected deeply to who I was and my own process and my own feelings. I was realizing an idea that was mine, and my own, and came from myself, and my own feelings and my own experiences. And so everything I said on YouTube, every blog post I wrote, every piece of content, every infographic, everything I did was a part of that process and now I'm just happy to let that be up there. Now I'm just uh, happy to recognize that, oh, that was when I figured this out. Oh, that was when I was learning about this. Oh yeah, that was when I was doing research on that topic. Oh yeah, that was when I was figuring out this. Oh wow, that was such a stupid idea or theory. How could I think that? How could I believe that? And it was a celebration and a process of self-discovery. I wasn't discovering objective truth, I was discovering personal truth in myself and I was hoping that it would resonate with and connect with other people and yeah, even if I don't necessarily agree with everything I used to say, I still see people commenting on my older videos saying, wow, this really helped me or this really put me at ease or this really made it easier for me to get over a difficult situation, this made me like myself a little bit better. And uh, then I thought, oh, if it was good for me, good enough for me two years ago and for this person at this moment, then it's good enough to be there. So I'm not going to burn it down. I'm not going to sweep it under the rug. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to pretend it was never there. Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor, and this is a general insight on the INFP video. But before I start talking about the INFP, let's talk about my Patreon channel. Oh my god though, I can't believe I used to talk like that. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, share, subscribe. If you want to reach more content like this, uh, also check out Frank James' video on INFJ Burndown, which inspired me to make this video. Thanks so much for that video, Frank. I really, really resonated with it. And it really put some things in place that I have struggled to formulate or understand in myself. So... Thanks a lot, I appreciate it, and yeah, everybody else also go check out Frank Games' channel.